Welcome to Let's Play Dungeons and Dragons, Episode 2. Previously on Let's Play D&D, I want to go to a brothel. All right. So that sound, when I sit down, it's the air coming out of the chair. D&D starter set. How's that looking? Yeah, I get the idea. Okay. So I sat at Starbucks all day. I didn't even go to work. I have battle fatigue. Stupid character sheets that I'm not gonna use anytime soon. Starter set rule book is what we're working on. The last time, Davok had combat with this guy. But what's gonna happen is he's just gonna regenerate. So he's all pissed off at the guy who killed him. Maybe. He looted 10 gold from his pockets. So now he has some spending money. What would you like to do, Davok? I think I'd like to go have a beer. Davok, but you're not 21 yet. That law didn't exist back then. Oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, let's see, a pen, and he has uh, one XP, and yes, I'm changing his name from Devad to Davok. I had forgotten about that barbarian name that I had. Devad is more of a mirror universe kind of name, but Davok is me as a barbarian. It's much better. And as soon as I find a marker, I need to color in his hair. This pen might work. I just can't do the blonde body builder thing. It needs to be more like Conan. Well, that's a start. I have paint in the studio. As soon as I find it. I'm supposed to be an artist. But instead I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. I guess I could start making art videos. Since I have a nice table. I could actually make some real art. Okay, there's Davok. What else did I want to do on this uh, character sheet? Okay, I have a list of deities. Cthulhu, Krom, Dionysus, Bacchus. He's the god of wine, isn't he? I have to look it up. Dionysus is the god of wine. Is Bacchus the half man, half goat? I think so. And then a uh, Thor. He's my other favorite god. All right, so I have five gods. Well, let's see. Um, I have this man of arms guy. Eventually he's gonna be uh, Davok's companion. This guy could end up on the adventuring team too, maybe. He looks cool. Okay. I must find a beer. Let's see, where could he go to have a beer?
All right. Here's the bar. He's in the bar. Or a tavern. Can you see that, you? Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess he needs a, a bar stool. Well, this can be the bar. The bartender, he could be the bartender for right now. All right. Maybe he could be the bartender, the guy you killed. Hey, you're the guy I killed. I'm the bartender of this establishment. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I was just playing around and I regenerated. No harm done. I'm really sorry I looted your body of 10 gold pieces. Ah, uh, that's alright. I'm, I'm rich. You obviously need the money more than me. You seem like a good guy. I was just fucking with you. That's really nice of you. Well, can I use the money I stole from you to buy a beer? Sure. You want a pint? Yeah, I'd love a pint. All right. All right, this is my own homemade brew. Here's a pint for you. All right, I'll, I'll drink it then. Well, that's nice. Oh, let's see. I have another figure somewhere. As soon as I can find out where it went to. Uh, Dang it. Ah, here we go. Well, look at this girl. She's going to be the local slut prostitute. Hey, mister, would you like to buy me a beer? Oh, watch out for her. She does this every day, tries to get a free beer. Ah, oh, come on, Johnny, give me a beer. Uh, I'll buy her a beer. What the hell? Okay, it's against my better judgment. Okay, here's the money for a beer. Thanks. Well, uh, if you drink too much beer, you won't be so skinny anymore. You'll get some junk in the trunk. That's okay. I'm 19 and I'm a vixen, so beer won't affect me for another five years. See, look at my butt. Yes, that is a fine ass. The finest on the street. Ha 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 ha. Okay. The man at arms can come in. Hey, can I order a beer? Maybe I'll go over here. Yeah, here's uh, here's one beer. I don't know how much it costs yet. <laughs> I'd have to look it up in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, how much? Maybe it's a uh, one silver piece. Might be a beer. Okay. In the last episode. We did some reading, and we're going to read every single episode until we get through all the printed material here. That'll take a while, so I'll figure out what to do after that. So I read this first section, Getting Started. If this is your first time playing Dungeons and Dragons, start by reading the rest of this chapter. It tells you the most important roles you need to play the game. Someone needs to be the Dungeon Master for your first play experience. I can read this pretty good today, but here's my glasses. It works better. Since you're reading this, you're a good candidate to be the DM. If what, what a person can read, so I can be a DM. Since you're reading this, you're a good candidate to be the DM. 
Are they talking about people who don't read at all? If one of your friends knows how to play D&D already, I thought they were going to say, one of your friends knows how to read already. You might want to ask that person to be the DM and help you learn the game. Ah, oh, this game is for 12-year-olds. <laughs> they don't know about brothels yet. Unless they've been watching their dad's movies. If one of your friends knows how to play D&D &D already, you might want to ask that person to be the DM and help you learn the game. It's such an easy game to learn. All you need is a DM who knows what he's doing. You don't have to know anything to play this game. Once you've read this chapter, take a look at the first few pages of the adventure book. That will help you understand the role of the DM and the basics of a D&D &D adventure. From there, look over the rest of this book. You don't need to memorize everything before your first game, but it helps if you know where to find the rules while you play. Then get familiar with the adventure and you'll be ready to... Then... Get familiar with the adventure, and you'll be ready to gather your friends together to play. Each player chooses one character from the five options included. And they're crappy options. It's up to the players to turn these bare-bones characters into people by giving them names, describing their appearance, and bring, bringing them to life while playing through the adventure. If you have more than five players, it's okay for two players to use the same character. As long as they make the details of the character distinct. One clerk might be a jolly woman named Sephiroth, while the other is a severe man named Albrecht. Okay. Ah, uh, the prose is a little clunky. It's not bad, but... Okay, we'll just do this final section today. Game dice. The game uses the polyhedral dice that come with this set. In these rules, the different dice are referred to by the letter D, followed by the number of sides, D4, D6, D8, D10. The zero on the die represents a 10, D12, and D20. For instance, a D6 is a six-sided die. Percentile dice, or D100, work a little differently. You generate a number between 1 and 100 by rolling the 10-sided die twice. The first roll gives the 10's digit, and the second gives the 1's digit. If you roll a 7 and a 1, for example, the number rolled is 71. Two zeros represent 100. When you need to roll dice, the rules, the rules tell you how many dice to roll of a certain type, as well as what modifiers to apply. For example, 3 dice 8 plus 5 means you roll 3 8-sided dice, add them together, and add 5 to the total. Alright. So here's the dice. Let's roll. 3, 2, 5 plus 7 is 12, 14. 24, 26. Uh, let's see, what does a 26 do? Okay, this episode is almost over. Let's see, 26. The highest number you can possibly get would be 24, 32. 44 uh, plus 6, 50, 60. So 26 is kind of a below average roll for six dice. So that was a luck roll. Had it been high, the bartender would have given them all free drinks. If it was so low, it was abominable, he would have said, get the fuck out of here. Had it been a really great luck roll, she, she might have like 
Hey soldier, you want to come up to my room for free? Sure, baby. But it's just a normal role, so they just, what happens is they just have another drink. And he's just thinking about his next adventure, what he's going to do. She, uh, because of the luck roll, she's just going to go wander off. And he's going to, like, follow her. Try and get lucky. And he's just going to hang out and be bored and alone. I like this luck roll thing. That can really uh, change change the whole event. Wow. I just invented that. Yeah, when you don't know what to do, just do a luck roll. See what happens. It could be the weather. Something in the weather. It could be uh, a wandering monster or not. Um, it could learn, uh, it could lead into something chaotic or something really good or beneficial. So, if I got the maximum number for these dice, a goddess could appear and grant him an extra strength point just because she likes him. So that'd be cool. He definitely needs some strength. He's only nine. So I have plans to get that up so he can be a rad fighter. We never really tried that when we were playing. Um, the friends I played with in high school, they would just, we would all cheat. We'd roll like eight, eight D6s. And eventually every player in the game, all of us, all our stats were 18. So we would get plus three on all our rolls. That's kind of cheating. Okay. Just, just to be a player character, the, the person is already awesome. So to have 18 for all your stats, that's like Superman level. Serious. Okay. Man. Playing D and D is a lot of fun. I had no enjoy I had no idea I would enjoy this so much. Thank you for watching.